Welcome on board the E7A Wedgetail. Let's go for a tour. As we look down the tube, we can see that all the standard seats you'd expect to find on a 737 have been replaced by the 10 mission consoles, with uh, the mission commander typically sitting the second seat in, and he'll have his systems officer and his senior surveillance control officer sitting on either side of them. We can also see that each seat has an oxygen system above it in case of an in-flight emergency. There's an audio panel to the right hand side where we can tune all the different radios and comm suites that we need to be uh, talking on to. There's also a keyboard for you to uh, type where you work in and a soft touch panel for shortcuts in case uh, there's things that need to be done quickly. As we continue down, we can see that each seat has a five point harness which is always strapped on during takeoff and landing and you typically have your lap belt on at all times during flight as well. Typically we'll fly with none of the lights on. There are little flashlights that we can have turned on for each console but typically we fly in the dark just to help with uh, your situation awareness and being able to focus on the screen. Another big difference between a standard 737 and the Wedgetail is that there's safety equipment all over the aircraft. We can see there's portable oxygen systems on top of the standard oxygen in case we need to deploy for an in-flight incident. And there's also fire extinguishers throughout the whole aircraft in case we need to fight a fire on board. As we continue down the aircraft, we can see there's some cabinets here that house some of the systems equipment. And we also have a crew rest area complete with a full galley. In the galley, we can see there's an oven, which typically takes about 15, 20 minutes to get your toasties just right. There's also a fridge with water and other drinks, waste bin, a pot for making some coffees, and also little cupboards where you can house cutlery, plates and, uh, plates and forks and all. As we get towards the back of the jet, we can see we're now in the crew rest area. There's four more comfortable seats for the really long flights where you can go and have a break as well as a table here where you could do further planning for a mission or if you wanted to play cards or something to take, uh, take the time off during one of your breaks. Let's make our way back down to the flight deck and have a look at the front end of the aircraft. As we get to the front of the aircraft, we can see above us on the roof of the aircraft the URC, which is the air-to-air -air refueling receptacle door. So when we do in-flight air-to-air refueling, the systems officer will get up and open the door to allow us to do the air-to-air -air refueling. As we work further forward, behind this door, we can see the lavatory. Not quite like what you'd see on a 737 standard, but it uh, still comes in handy, especially on the long flights. And here we are on the flight deck. So as we can see, compared to the back end of the aircraft, where it's completely different to a standard 737, the front end is quite similar to what you'd expect to see in an airline jet. The captain and their co-pilot still sit on the left and right hand side of the aircraft respectively. You've got your throttle columns in the middle, the control column for each pilot, there's a flight mission computer and all the standard uh, systems equipment you'd expect to see. There's also a lot of automation and support equipment built in to help the pilots fly the aircraft, especially during the long hours that are required for some of the missions we fly. My name's Nelson, I'm a pilot officer with the Royal Australian Air Force and it's been a pleasure giving you this tour.